this is Kurt uh, Frankenberg <laughs> with RadioactiveTrading.com, and uh, I'm joined today by my good friend and fellow presenter, Mr. Michael Chupka. How's it mm. going, Mike? Oh, things are going pretty good, Kurt. How are you doing out? Uh, how are you doing out there as we uh, get ready for expiration? One day away, right? Yeah, payday happens tomorrow. Yeah, I can't wait. It's it's uh, going to be good. I've I've got a position to manage. May need to roll a uh, bear call spread. Mm -hmm. um, but, and uh, uh, yeah, looking good. I, I really appreciate uh, Expiration Friday because it's the end of some things, <clears throat> the beginning of some new, and, and uh, we dig it. Uh, let's see. We've got a bunch of folks uh, coming. Let me. Uh, yeah, okay, I just renewed this uh, thing, and nine more folks came in the room. Okay. So, uh, folks, I'd like to welcome you. Uh, it's it's about time to start now, so we'll uh, we'll get it underway. Um, let's see. Here we are. Very good. Okay, as I mentioned, this is Kurt Frankenberg with Radioactive Trading, and uh, Mike Chepka uh, is the uh, Director of Options Education over at Power Options. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to be sharing today... Uh, something that uh, we looked at on on Tuesday, and we had a lot of response. A lot of folks said, "Hey, you know, can I see that again, or or can you go into further depth? You know, can you explain that a little more uh, thoroughly?" And uh, the answer is yes, yes, we can. In fact, I've got a saved presentation that that we did, uh, oh, maybe maybe uh, three weeks ago, a month ago, uh -huh. um, and we're going to combine that with some of the tools from Power Options. Um, really cool. Here's a quick introduction. Um, uh, Myself, uh, Kurt Frankenberg, I, I started um, trading in 1998, <clears throat> and the reason that I got started was um, I uh, owned at the time, and I still own, a martial arts studio. The martial arts studio started doing pretty well, and I was looking for a place to park the cash <laughs> that it was generating. And uh, I got into real estate. Uh, that didn't pan out for me very well. Um, not, not that I didn't make money. I, it just seemed like a lot of work. It just seemed like a whole lot, to, a lot of things to consider, a lot of things to know about, and a lot of ways to get hung up. Um, and uh, it, it seemed like I was constantly going to a seminar to, you know, catch up. <laughs> you know, you you find out something that's that's a, an issue, a difficulty, and then you go to another seminar to to find out, okay, now well, what did I do wrong, and what can I do in the future? Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, at the at uh, the end of 1998, I went to a seminar that was by a real estate guy, but it was for stock investing, and it was called Zero to Zillions. And the guy charged uh, for a weekend seminar, he charged $3,500. Okay. And I learned how to trade cover calls, Mike, in, in one weekend. Uh, I also learned bull sure spreads, better call spreads, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> calendar spreads, mm -hmm. uh, dividend capturing, you know, they, they covered a lot uh, in the two days. and. Uh, uh, like you said, uh, yeah, sure you did. You know, I, they, they didn't really give me the whole manual. And uh, what what happened was I ended up getting hurt really badly, losing almost all of my life savings. Uh, and it was just from following directions. I was following my uh, cover call trading guru's directions to the letter, and uh, got hurt really bad. So that was me. Now, uh, Mike, uh, you and I uh, hooked up. Oh, I should I should mention that along the way, I decided that I was never going to allow that to happen again. Not uh, going to get hurt like that again. Sure. And uh, yeah, can't I, be and successful I knew, with that, can you? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> uh, and, and I realized that you know uh, I could I could blame my guru, you know, or I could blame the market, or I could blame my luck. But the fact is, it was my behavior that opened up the door to the big losses. And, mm -hmm. and I thought, well, you know, if I could change my behavior, uh, I could change my results. And um, and I was right, and I decided to do things uh, backwards. Everything that the guru told me to do that uh, lost me money, I decided to do uh, pretty much in reverse. And uh, since then, it's been a really nice journey, and uh, I've had some folks join me along the way, including you, Mike. That's so, right. Uh, that's a good segue into uh, if you can make an introduction for yourself and how we met and what we're trying to accomplish for everyone, and, uh, and, and we'll just uh, dive right into uh, the webinar. All right, let's, uh, I'll try to keep this brief, folks. Um, I'm the director of education, as Kurt mentioned here, at Power Options. Power Options was created by Ernie Zarenner about 15 years ago. He's been in business for over 15 years, but he's been trading options for about uh, 15 to 20 years prior to that. 
Uh, the Power Options suite of tools are designed for self-directed options investors. We support over 23 different option strategies um, for investors, whether it be covered calls, long calls, straddle strangles, and so forth. Now, when I started out with uh, Ernie and the Power Options staff 10 years ago, um, Ernie took me under his wing and taught me covered calls. And about that time, that was really the only thing I was allowed to trade. When you first apply to trade options, you usually get level one trading, so you're allowed to do covered calls, maybe buy calls and buy puts. Um, so about for the first 18 months that I was trading, I was following covered calls, and I had fortunately not the same experience Kurt had, but I had the same experience that many of you might have had with your first uh, going through covered calls there, your first foray, I should say, into covered calls, where I had some great success in the first three or four months. I was uh, following my game plan. I was making 25 to 3%, sometimes 3.5% when I was assigned you know, being right 80 to 90% of the time and trying to roll down the calls and the ones that move against me. But in the fourth or fifth month, I know I had a bad month. It was about a 50-50 win-loss record. Half the stocks declined. The other half got assigned for the 2 or 3%. But I realized the declines on some of my stocks that were 10% range, 12% range, 15% range, and 18%, even with rolling down the calls to kind of hedge some of that loss, I was right back where I started from four months before. And then, of course, you get another two or three months success, and then you end up giving it back to the market when there's a subtle downturn maybe five or six months later. It's always the catch, isn't it, Kurt? We don't know the future. We're going to yeah. talk about that later. And what worked in the market five or six months ago is probably not going to work five or six months down the road. Um, so I branched out, and I tried, uh, started trading standard collars with a little bit of protection and uh, branched out into leverage trades, started doing calendar spreads and some other positions, you know, mimicking the covered call, a leverage covered call using a diagonal spread. And I've got to be honest, for the first, uh, you know, six or seven months or so, the diagonal spreads there were the most successful option strategy I have ever traded during that current market mm -hmm. time. This is about eight years ago. Four okay. months later, calendar spreads were the most devastating options trading <laughs> strategy I've ever been in because the market turned and the losses on those, you get a 10% loss in the stock, you're losing 20 to 30% on your diagonal spread. So, and you can't really sell a call right. below the long call strike price because now you've just created a bearish position and you can get further losses if it comes back up. So, uh, mm. you know, after experiencing a little bit more, tried credit spreads and iron condors and found I just don't have the time during the day to have a portfolio heavy in iron condors and credit spreads. And it was about that time, shortly after that, was just trading these standard collars and a couple other small positions that uh, Kurt uh, was a customer of Power Options. And he actually called us up, this is about four and a half years ago, for one of our coaching sessions. So we, as a Power Options trial member subscriber, you can sign up for one of those free coaching sessions. And Kurt wanted to walk through on how to use the regular tools and the historical tools for this uh, unique married put setup that he was using. Well, I walked him through the historical tools, and I was quite honest with him. I said, well, I appreciate that you're limiting risk, but I don't see how you're going to make money with this position. You're so far under the eight ball when you open up this position that it doesn't look like you're going to make money unless the stock moves up 15 or 20 percent. And Kurt replied, well, oh, really? Well, why don't you come to my free webinar, just as all of you are doing now, the 70-plus people that are online with us right now, Kurt. And... Uh, Kurt wanted to offer to show me how he makes money with this technique. Well, I was so impressed with that first presentation, I invited Ernie to join us for the next uh, couple presentations, and Ernie was so impressed with it that we decided to partner up with Kurt, and uh, we enhanced some of the tools on Power Options, the Married Put Search, the Married Put uh, Search by Symbol, added another tool called the Stock Insurance Tool, and, of course, we uh, tweaked the portfolio tools to really help radioactive investors uh, find, manage, track, and analyze their various positions. And uh, since then, since about four and a half years ago, Ernie and I have been trading the radioactive techniques that Kurt brought to the table um, in both of our accounts. And at any given time, I had a discussion with, uh, I had a coaching session this morning where uh, one of the customers asked me about it because he heard me say it on the webinar. And at any given time in the last four years, anywhere between, let's say, 45 to 55 percent of my trading capital uh, has been invested in the radioactive trading techniques, maybe another 20 to 30 percent was invested in standard collars, and then about another 5 to 10 percent uh, was trading smaller spread positions, bear call credits, bull put credits on the broad-based indexes and ETFs. And everyone says, well, how is that working out for you? Well, I don't need to give out the numbers. I wouldn't be doing that with that large portion of my account if it wasn't working out for me. <laughs> I would have changed strategies by now <laughs> if it wasn't successful, if I wasn't making money with it and uh, protecting yeah. my losses that I was suffering with the covered calls and the naked put strategies as well. Would, would you say, Mike, that uh, your 
um, radioactive portion of your portfolio has performed the best over the last four and a half years? Yes, it has. And, and the reason why is that uh, some of the positions I have with the standard collar, Kurt, you know as well because you know options, that the standard collar position mm -hmm. still is only risking 5 or 6%. But the drawback with the standard right. collar... It utilizes, yeah, I was going to say it utilizes uh, radioactive principles. Yes. The standard collar does. In a shorter but, term. Uh, <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, it's a much shorter term, and and uh, uh, you can get uh, good, solid short-term returns, but it is capped, isn't it? That's exactly right. So if I pick the right <clears throat> stock that moves up eight to ten percent in the first thirty to forty-five days without dumping more money into the position, I'm only making that you know two point eight three three point five percent return. Whereas if I was in a married put, I would have had an unrealized gain of around five percent, maybe six percent, if the stock had moved up eight percent. Right. <clears throat> well, cool. Um, I'm, uh, <clears throat> gosh, I'm, I'm having a little bit of uh, coughing here. Ah. <laughs> I apologize for that. Um, I'm really pleased, Mike, that uh, uh, as the Director of Options Education over at Power Options, you've got a lot of different strategies at your disposal. Mm -hmm. But it, it's, it's real flattering to know that uh, a lot of what you do is, is in radioactive positions. And uh, a lot of what you do is also in what um, Power Options is really known for, which is uh, helping folks to manage the iron condors and the uh, uh, you know vertical spreads and and um, and collars. So really cool. Uh, it, well, it's it's been a real nice uh, uh, partnership over the years, and and I appreciate it, folks. Uh, what we're going to do that's enough introductions from us. What we're going to do now is get to know you just a little bit, and. Um, and to share with you, I think you're going to really dig. Uh, income method number three, the bulletproof vest, mm -hmm. is a way to take a credit on a stock that you own, take a credit out of a married put position without doing any short calls at all. There's no covered calls in it. Uh, and so you'll find that the, the limitations that go along with cover calls are not there. Uh, but the protection uh, that's greater than what a cover call might um, uh, give you um, is is afforded, and and it's uh, it's pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. Some folks, uh, the reason I'm talking about cover calls so much is that usually it's the most heavily used strategy among our seminar attendees, and today is no exception. Right now, we've got about seven out of ten. Uh, oh, by the way, folks, if you participate in these polls, it really helps not just us, but some of these poll questions are going to help you. <laughs> uh, about 7 out of 10 of our um, traders attending today are doing cover calls. Hmm. Let me go ahead and close that poll here after three more seconds, two more seconds, one more second, and close. Okay, at the last moment, it changed to 71%. Oh. It was as high as 75% at one point in the, in the uh, polling process there. Uh, folks are doing cover calls with their cousin naked puts. Now, uh, about a quarter of the audience is using long calls and puts, and, and uh, exactly half are using the verticals, diagonals, uh, and, and different types of combination spreads. Mm -hmm. Some of our attendees are not trading options at all, and uh, I, I think that that's, uh, that's fine. You know, if, if you don't, number one, don't understand, or number two, uh, have been hurt by options trades in the past, uh, that would be a good reason to stay away from them. <laughs> but, the <thing. laughs> but the thing is, options used correctly can keep you out of trouble. That's what I'm all about. Our mission here is to provide the best options education available to help people stay out of trouble. You heard about my story where I lost my life savings. It, it was in 15 minutes, Mike. It was exactly 15 minutes. Awesome. That my life savings went completely down the tubes. Yeah, unfortunately, and, amazing, but it's amazing that that can happen. Yeah. it happens more often than we like to think. Yeah, it's it's not a not a happy scene. So uh, I made it my uh, duty, you know, really to. Uh, I started blogging, and I and I I didn't have a product to sell. I didn't uh, have any reason to do this except for to journal for myself because my marriage ended shortly afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I had nothing better to do, really, you know, in the evenings than, than to uh, blog about um, what I was discovering about limiting risk, and I was trying to help others stay out of trouble. I ended up writing a book, and I do have something for sale, but we're not doing a sales job today. 
Okay, we, what we are trying to do is raise awareness to how the married put strategy combines position stop sizing and what I'll call an absolute stop. An absolute stop. Mike, is a stop order an absolute? Is it a guarantee? No, no. Ernie just uh, answered one of the radioactive trading customers uh, yesterday about that, that when you place mm -hmm. a stop order, you're essentially placing a market order to say, well, if the stock hits this point, close me out at any time for whatever you can get. It might right. not be that value that you expect. Right. If the stock gaps down, for example, let's say you have a 10% trailing stop mm -hmm. and your stock gaps down 30% because of bad news or, or uh, uh, you know, uh, a missed, missed earnings or, or something like that, if, if it gaps down by 30%, you get filled at the 30% loss. That's right. <clears throat> it's not a happy thing. The stop is not there to protect you. It's there to take advantage of you when your stock is weak. Okay, so uh, an absolute stop is what the married put provides. But something that a lot of folks don't realize is that a married put can allow for income. Okay, so folks, uh, you may be starting to think, okay, this sounds a little too good, uh, and I know that there's probably a product behind this, and you know what, there is. <laughs> but we're not going to promote it today. Okay, we're, we're not going to be about uh, uh, a special one-time good only offer today type deal. Take action now or you'll lose out. That's that's not the idea. Uh, today, uh, all we're going to be doing is 100% uh, content, no bull. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to take a common problem for traders and we're going to fix it. And I may point you out to further resources. I've already done that, Mike, with the uh, chat button. I sent out uh, a uh, link to Power Options. It says www.powerup.com forward slash RAT for two free weeks of Power Options, no credit card required. And uh, that give uh, folks the opportunity to uh, try some of these um, setups that we're going to show. Okay? So that's what to expect from today's RigAfterTrain.com webinar. Let's jump in. We've already asked you to introduce yourself as far as what kind of options plays you're doing right now. Let me ask you this. How happy are you with your moments. How happy are you with your 12 months performance? Okay. Now this is actually uh, better than usual. A lot of times we have, uh, Mike, we have less than 20 percent in the first two categories. You know, either either absolutely I'm kicking butt and taking names or and eh, making money, but not enough. You know, the first two lines are good, right? You know, but mixed emotions means, oh, uh, geez, I'm getting hurt, or uh, uh, you know, I'm having some wins, but I'm also having some losses. That's why my emotions are mixed, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Or, geez, I lost, I lost money last year rather than having a gain, uh, or I'm ready to quit. Okay, so we've got that that whole range instead of just yes or no. We've got a whole range, a whole spectrum of answers. And uh, a lot of folks on the line today. Thanks so much for your participation, folks. It's great. Over 80 uh, participants uh, signing in since we started. Okay, so let me. Sh uh, only 4% said absolutely. I'm kicking butt and taking names, but a whole lot are in the category where they're making money. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Not enough. Not enough. Okay, but they're making money. <laughs> and making money is better than what? Losing money, Kurt. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's better losing money. It's better than a sharp stick in the eye. Okay, so we've got forty-three percent in the uh, to the good, and then the remainder of our audience, the other fifty-seven percent, fifty-six percent, is um, <coughs> experiencing uh, no fun. All right, so we're going to see about <coughs> fixing that. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm going to make three bold promises. Number one, we're going to show you the solution to a big problem facing buying holders. And I'm willing to bet that you're going to take a look back and wish you'd thought of it sooner. We just did this one as a later on. We're going to show you something, and then we're going to take another poll and say, okay, what do you think of that? Uh, you know, it would be uh -huh. better if you had practiced that last year. We're going to show a riskless spread trade, which is done into credit. Now, that sounds pretty um, awesome. Normally, a credit spread anticipates what the market may do, but this is a spread trade done after the fact. And in mm -hmm. fact, Mike, you did this very spread trade earlier this week, right? That's exactly right, Kurt. Yes. The bulletproof right. the position. What's cool about this is that it does not use any short calls at all, but it still leaves you with unlimited upside potential. 
And finally, I'm going to show you how it's possible to become bulletproof. This is, after all, bulletproofing with the income methods. How to become bulletproof to where you can win, but you can't lose mm -hmm. before an earnings announcement or other expected news events. Okay? So, how cool is that? <laughs> Let's get in. We've already asked about uh, how happy everyone is with their charting results. Here's the problem. Here's why. An earnings announcement or other expected news item is coming up. Okay? All right. Now, this could send shares either way, and a lot of folks bite their fingernails up to the second knuckle. And other folks just get out. They get out whether their stock is up or whether it's down. If it's up, they count themselves lucky when their earnings announcement comes out and, and the stock crashes. But they, mm -hmm. they kick themselves in the tush, Mike, if, <laughs> if the stock keeps going skyward, right? But without them, they're not in it. Okay, so it's not cool. Um, so, you know, buying and holding is... Um, you know, can be a good strategy, okay? But what if your stock crashes if you hold it through this earnings announcement? Not cool. And just as nagging of a question is, what if it blows up in a good way? What if the stock goes way high and I'm not in it because I didn't want to face, you know, the midnight jitters the day before the earnings announcement, okay? I don't want to feel like a chump is what's going through most people's uh, minds, okay? So, we're going to talk about the bulletproof vest, okay? Here's a, a haiku that I wrote in honor of uh, the bulletproof vest, Mike. I wait for earnings knowing that I may not win, but I cannot lose. Mm -hmm. Yay. Now, before we talk about cutting our losers short and letting our winners run, let's talk about the opposite. Mike, what, okay. what is the opposite of cutting our losers short and letting our winners run? Well, we've got uh, letting our losers run and cutting right. our winners short. Isn't that the structure of the cover call strategy? When you, when you really break it down, I, I come to you as my friend, and, and you don't know it's cover calls, okay? You don't know it's cover calls, but I say, Mike, I've got this great investment idea. Uh, if I'm wrong, I could potentially lose everything. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. But if I'm right, I could make three to five percent in a month. What do you think? Should I do it? It sounds a little bit risky to me, Kurt. <laughs> yeah, and yet a lot of folks have, have uh, uh, and college-educated people, you know, uh, including me, have, have, have gone out and said, hey, you know, this sounds really good. And the reason that it sounds good is that the idea of taking income on a stock that you own is kind of sexy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, uh, uh, but the thing is, if we're going to buy stock, this isn't my propaganda, this is uh, right off of Options Express. Um, if I'm going to buy stock, I must have a bullish expectation, right? Otherwise, I wouldn't buy it. That's right. That's exactly right. 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 Now, now, I did call this propaganda. Mike, they say that cover call selling is safer, but mm -hmm. uh, we've got 7 out of 10 of our audience is, uh, is doing cover calls, and only 4% say, man, I'm doing great. Absolutely kicking butt and taking names. Only said, I'm doing great. And 39% said, eh, I'm making money, but I'm not making enough money. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the rest are unhappy with the results. So, so, Mike, would you necessarily say that the risk in a cover call trade is safe? I would only say it's safer than owning stock outright, sir. I would not say that it's safer overall or long term, as many of us have experienced. Right. I'll go along with this. The reward is limited. Mm -hmm. So what would the flip side of that be? Oh, we, we should talk about spread trades, too. Generally speaking, Mike, spread trades can, do cut your losers short mm -hmm. in, in the sense that uh, you know how much you could lose right up front, right? It's, uh, it, it's, it's a dialed-in amount already. But the failing of uh, most spread trades is that it doesn't allow you to let your winners run. For example, Mike, um, if I'm in a bear call spread, I sell the 50s, I buy the 55s. Mm -hmm. I believe that the stock is going to stay below 50. It goes to $49.99. Do I make money? Yeah, you make the maximum profit on the position, Kurt. You have a successful trade. All right, what if it goes down to $10? Do I make more money because I was really, really right? No, you make that maximum capped gain on the position. 
Right. I, you know, uh, sometimes they say an inch is as bad as a mile, right? I, mm -hmm. I, I, if, I, if it's out of reach for me, it's out of reach for me, okay? And, and the thing is, with, uh, with most vertical spreads, if I'm going to um, cut my losers short, I can't let my winners run. So right. here's our starting point. Here's our starting point. It's, it's a structure that I think obeys that trader's maxim of cut your losers short and let your winners run. D d does this look congruent to you, Mike? Let's examine it. Well, absolutely. We now have a capped loss to the downside, and we have an right. unlimited upside profit potential. We're in a position where we're forced to cut our losers short and allow our winners to run. Yeah. We've seen where they say, okay, it's safe, or it's, you know, safer. Uh, we've seen where uh, the... the the expectation is bullish, all right, but we haven't seen this. We haven't seen unlimited potential. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if you're bearish on the market, you can still put together uh, a position like this. It's just structured a little differently. But we don't have the time to go into all that. What we want to do is just uh, let you all know that it's possible to set up a trade that has a limited risk, mm -hmm. but un unlimited potential. Okay, so that's where we're going to start. Uh, Mike, I'm going to show my uh, um, radioactive profit machine, and then I'd like to sh have you show yours, because yours, uh, it, you just did like, uh, was it Tuesday or Wednesday? Oh, well, I just made the adjustment on Tuesday, on, on Monday, on I'm Tuesday. sorry. I made the adjustment on Monday. We showed it on Tuesday, right, but okay. the position was opened on June and 20th. Got it. You opened it up on June 20th, and you bulletproofed it on Monday. This yes. Week. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's... A, it's the most recent example of this uh, bulletproof bass technique. But um, what we're going to do here, Mike, is talk about uh, a, a, a dated technique. And the reason I'm using this one is because it's out there on YouTube. <laughs> I, I, I did this as I was getting into the position. I made a YouTube video by capturing the doing a screen capture, mm -hmm. a YouTube video of this, and uh, uh, it's, it's real easy. Research in Motion was trading at $84.04. Now, First of all, I'm going to tell you what I did not do. I did not sell a company call. <laughs> if I had, I would have felt like a chump. Okay, and here's why. Uh, because uh, on September 5th, Research in Motion was trading at 84.04, and the October 85 call was trading at 610. That's a really volatile, I mean, that's big uh, premium there. What does that tell you about this play? Well, something's coming up, Kurt. Earnings or some yeah. kind of event is coming up that is going to cause that position to, uh, the market is uh, speculating that that stock's going to increase or it's going to shift drastically one way or the other. Very good. Now, I'll tell you this. I have been in research in motion when it gapped down 35%. It, it, it wasn't at this time, okay? But I have been in research in motion when it gapped down 35%. Mm -hmm. Good God. <laughs> However, my my pain that I got out of that was uh, less than 6%. I lost less than 6% of my investment, even though the stock went down 35%, and I was long stock. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing. If I had done that with this cover call, if I, if, if I reduced the cost basis down to 77.94, and the stock went down by 35%, Mike, would that be a win? No, would it? Not at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> I would lose, uh, you know, about twenty bucks. Mm -hmm. You know, more than twenty bucks. I would lose two thousand dollars for every hundred shares. Uh, I would be trading. Uh, now, here's the deal, Mike. If I had uh, won, I, I, I'd be called out at eighty-five dollars a share for a nine percent profit. That does sound rather sexy. Oh yes, absolutely. It, yeah, but remember, if if the stock gaps down, it's not so sexy. Okay. So this is not what I did. What I did instead was this, Mike. I I uh, set myself up for the bulletproof vest. Okay. I bought Research in Motion again at 8404, but then I also purchased a January 09. That's not a misprint. This is 07, and I bought an 09 hundred dollar put option for 2470. Now, your objection when you saw this kind of trade was what? Well, Kurt, you're going to need a significant rise in the underlying stock price in order to make any profit. You're putting, you know, almost 20%, 25% of what you invested in the stock into this put. So you're going to need the stock to move up to $108.75 before you realize a penny of profit. Right, and that's what a lot of folks believe. 
uh, including I did too, until I started paying attention to how uh, put prices actually perform when they're in the money and far out in time. Mm -hmm. Mike, with this put being in the money, it's in the money by almost $16, and it's far away in time. It's, it's 15 months away, okay? Uh, when the stock goes up, it could go up $10, $15, $20, and the put price would come down by like uh, $5 or less. Or less, I, yes. Or less. Here's, here's the deal. I had a guaranteed exit of $100. I was going to be able to get out of this position for $100 no matter what because of the put, right? Yes. And mm -hmm. it, would probably, it would probably be better than that if I sell the stock and the put separately, right? Uh, because uh, there's there's some time value left in this, in sure. this put, you know, with, with 15 months. <laughs> so the total at risk is the difference, the difference between my total invested amount of 108.74 and the hundred dollars. Now a lot of folks will look at this put and say, man, that's expensive. But I'll say to you, I'm guaranteed to get most of this back. Isn't it 16 dollars in the money? Yes, it is. Yeah, so about two thirds of it, I'm guaranteed to get back. Let me say that again. Two thirds of it, I'm guaranteed to get back. Mm -hmm. So, so really, the only at risk amount is the time value, and when you set this 874 against the 10874, it's about eight percent. That's a little high for me. I usually keep my risks around six percent. Okay. Well, anyway, three weeks into the position, research and motion has gone up, and the hundred dollar put has come down to nineteen dollars and eighty cents. Did I lose money on the put? Yes or no? Yeah. No, it's about five dollars and ten cents, right? Oh, well, four ninety. I'm sorry. Uh, four ninety. Yeah. Math work now, reverse. Uh, yeah. Let me put this another way: the stock went up about fifteen dollars, and I also own it. That's so, right. Did I did I lose money? Yes or no? Not overall. No. You're going to make money because the gain in the stock is going to be more than or greater than the loss on the put option. Right, and here's the, the bulletproof vest. It's, I, I've been talking about it, giving it a good talk up. Uh, all I'm going to do is show where I'm changing the expiration month. Mike, the uh, October 07 expiration date was after the October earnings announcement. Mm -hmm. So that means if I do this move, and I did uh, three weeks in, into the position, if I do this move, I'm going to take a credit. Right? After all, I'm selling one, one option and buying another, and when you do that, that's a spread trade, and the spread trade generates a credit. Now, some folks may look at this and say, well, that's not a spread trade because you already own the put. Well, okay. <laughs> but it is. I mean, it, that, that's what Options Express treats it as. It treated it as a, uh, um, as a spread trade. It only costs one commission to do this. But I get a credit of 1260 one mm -hmm. commission. Do I still have my put option in place protecting the stock? Yes, sir, you do. Do I get to spend this 1260 if I want to? Of course, yes. That's in pocket it's, now into your account. Yeah. And I've got a sooner expiration to my insurance policy, but, uh, you know, hey, that's uh, the way the cookie crumbles. So here's the deal. Uh, research in motion uh, plus my original put cost a total of 108.74. Mm -hmm. Doing the spread trade where I swap one put for another brings in 12.60. So now my cost basis on so the stock and the put is 96.14. Well, that's good. Why is that good? Well, because we still own the 100 strike put, even though you shorten the time. It's still a 100 strike. You have a guaranteed exit to get out at $100 in the worst case scenario. So now that means that you are bulletproof on the position, meaning in the worst case scenario, you're going to make $3.86. Right. Now let, let me remind everybody, this is three weeks into the position. Okay. I've had folks that are covered callers tell me, uh, geez, you know, I'm bulletproof too. I used covered calls to pay for my stock so that I have no cost basis on my stock anymore. Mm -hmm. And I said, and I said, well, geez, cool. How long did that take you? Th this is a true story. When I was lecturing at MIT, I had somebody come up and tell me, I I'm bulletproof too. And, and I said, how long did it take you? He says, 13 years. Right. I, I said, okay, I did this in three weeks. Um, next. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the, the point is I didn't have to do lots and lots and lots of management. This was one play, okay? 
Now, uh, earnings announcement is approaching, okay? And I sent an email to my Fusion subscribers saying, I know the future. That's a really weird saying for me, Mike, isn't it? Yes, because we usually say the reason that we trade radioactively is because we don't know the future. We can't control necessarily the what's going to happen next. We want to protect those losses. That's right. I, I am the first to admit I am not a prophet when it comes to predicting the direction that a stock is going to take. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. Uh, I'm worse than most folks. <laughs> I'm unlucky or or uh, or I'm just you know stupider or maybe I just just don't believe in prognostication. Okay, but the thing is, this spread trade doesn't doesn't try to predict the future. This spread trade responds to what has already happened. Mm -hmm. So. I said I know the future, which is funny because I always say I don't know the future, and that's why I trade radioactively, but I did know my future that morning. My future the morning after the earnings announcement is I was going to be tickled pink, mm -hmm. either because earnings disappointed, rim crashes, and I'm still out with a three-week, three-and-a-half percent gain, that's or right. possibility number two, the earnings announcement uh, is good, and the price goes up even higher, and I'm long on the stock. And guess what? That is what happened. Mm -hmm. I was long on Research in Motion when she uh, spiked up after the earnings announcement, and I sold my shares for a 16.23% gain. I even held on to the, the, the put thinking, you know, it could go the other way. <laughs> I've got a free ride on it. You know, if, if it goes the other way, maybe I'll profit on the put going down, you know, right. uh, on the stock going back down. Sure. Uh, but it didn't. It didn't my, my put ended up expiring worthless, but was it worth it? Was it worth it for me to uh, get paid? I got paid, Mike, to sit on a stock. Uh, that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if I'd have sold the covered call like we discussed, I'd feel like a chump because I would have only got nine percent profit and no possibility of uh, hanging on. Okay. So, wait a minute. I know that some of you are saying. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see that again. How exactly did you take a credit and still be bulletproof? Well, let's let's do it uh, with a different stock, and I'll also show the principle that makes it work, and then Mike will uh, be able to um, mm -hmm. uh, show us uh, his actual trade. Um, you know, this, these are both actual trades, but Mike's going to show his very recent trade that he did um, last week. Okay, All right. Uh, Mike, when when I put together the blueprint back in two thousand and two. Actually, it was it was before 2002 that um, that I began kind of the outline on it. But but back when I was thinking about how to do this stuff, uh, I said, okay, you know, I got hurt trading covered calls. So what about instead of selling a call where I limit my upside? Because that's what I did. I limited my upside for several months, and mm -hmm. then I took a hit. Um, how about instead of selling a call, I buy a put? Okay. And another thing was this: instead of selling front month, how about I buy far out in time. Here's an example. Front month call for research in motion picks up six dollars uh, and ten cents, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. A far away put cost twenty four dollars. Let's see. The difference was one month six dollars, twenty four months. 20, uh, I'm sorry, fifteen months twenty four dollars. Right. It was like a little more than a dollar a month. You know, if I'm going to buy insurance, I want to spend less per month on the insurance. Doesn't doesn't mean I have to hold it all the way, okay? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, if if you're searching for a bargain, uh, Mike, uh, if you're getting insurance for your car and they would bill you monthly a hundred bucks mm -hmm. or bill you yearly eight hundred bucks, which would you go for if you had the money? Well, if I had the money, I want to go with the one that gives me the biggest discount per day. What's the best offer for me? Exactly. And so buying, buying far out in time adds to the price, but it makes a lesser price per day or price per month. Okay? So, uh, you know, instead of timing trades, I started to get into trading time. Mm -hmm. Also, instead of selling at the money, which is the thickest uh, time premium, I found out that if I buy in the money, it gave me the best protection and cost the less, the least. The least, yeah. 
Yeah, in terms of uh, time value, okay? Because uh, at the money, this this is an actual curve from oh gosh, 2003 of uh, of uh, options on Microsoft. Mike, Microsoft was trading at $25 a share. This is where the <coughs> $25 calls and puts were as far as time value. Mm -hmm. This is where the uh, uh, $30 puts and the and the $20 calls were. This is where the um, $20 puts and $30 calls were, right? Does that make sense? Right. The I'm buy with you. zone is, yeah, you want to get, you want to buy something that's out of the money if uh, uh, if it's a call or in the money if it's a put, right? Mm -hmm. You want to buy that way and uh, and then sell when it, when it changes. Now, here's the deal. Um, a more recent trade with me, uh, I picked up shares of Altera at 2735 and also the March 2011 $29 put option. That's six months away. Mm -hmm. Total investment is 3085. That means the guaranteed exit is 29 bucks, right? Because I've got the uh, $29 option. The difference is a buck eighty five. Now, okay. real quick, I'm going to talk about two layers of risk management. The first layer is this put option keeping my risk down to 6%. The second layer is diversification. When I did this trade, Mike, I had about $102,000 in my account. Okay. I didn't do 100 shares in one put. I did 500 shares in five puts. What's the dollar amount that I have at risk when it's 500 shares and five puts? Well, that's going to put you at about, uh, what was it, nine... Uh... 920? 920, yeah, 925, I think. Hold on. Okay, so if I've got $100,000 $100, and 925 of it is at risk, what is the percent of my portfolio that's at risk? Well, it's still under 1%, right, Kurt? It's 0.92 or 0.93% of your total portfolio value. Okay, cool. Before I show the bulletproof vest on this one, I want to re revisit these results. We had... 4% say, man, I'm kicking butt and taking names. 39% say, man, I'm making money but not enough. And the rest are varying degrees of unhappy with their trading. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if you limited risk like what we just showed last year, if you could use a time machine and go back in time and change all of your losses to 6% or less of the trade and 1% or less of your total account, would that make a difference? Would it make make a difference? And we had only four percent of our uh, audience say, "I am really happy with my trading." So it, this would have changed everybody's trading, I think. Okay, unless of course they they did practice this. <laughs> if you did practice this, then you know, just tell me if you, if you're happier or not happy. Okay, but uh, we've got about ten seconds left in the poll here. And so far, Mike, we're approaching 50% with people saying, man, I would have said I'm very happy with my trading. If you just consider your losses last year. Mm -hmm. Okay, that number went down just a little bit, but still it's, it's significant. It's still the highest number. Okay, let me close and share the results. 41%. Mike, is 41% better than 4% of our audience? Yeah, it's significantly higher, isn't it, Kurt? Yeah, 41% would have been one of those guys that said, I'm very happy with my trading. 36% might have still lost, but lost much less. So is that a better situation? Absolutely. We have more money now to put into new trades. We saved more of our uh, hard-earned capital to put into new trades. Yeah. And here's a paradigm shift for a lot of folks at the top there. I lost overall last year. Last year they had a losing year, but would have won if they had simply done what we just showed, the limiting risk and the 6% part, or 1% mm -hmm. of your account, okay? Now, but that's not all, <laughs> but that's not all. <laughs> I am sounding like a salesman, aren't I, Mike? Well, you know what? I'm not trying to sell a product today. Like I mentioned, uh, there's no promotional content today, but I am trying to sell you on an idea. The idea is maybe we need to start paying attention to this risk management plan, okay? All right. Now, Having started from there, Mike, 
A lot of folks will argue, let's go back, a, a lot of folks will argue you can't make a dime until your stock goes to 30.95. Isn't that right? That's right, because that's the break-even. So we know from trading and from our education, our $3,000 seminars, that I need the stock to be above the break-even at any time in order to make a profit. Yeah, not so. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> you'd probably believe this, but I don't know if everybody else in the audience would believe this. By the time the stock went to 2740, I'm sorry, 2940. 2940, two, sir. Yeah, $2 and one nickel move, okay? By the time it went up, $2 and a nickel. Not $3.50, but $2 and a nickel. Mm -hmm. I was bulletproof. I could not lose. In fact, I was guaranteed 75 cents a share win as the worst case scenario and as a best case scenario unlimited mm -hmm. okay. here's how okay the price of the put went down because the stock went up right I just said the stock went up by two dollars and five cents that's right well as the stock goes up two dollars and five cents the put drops 98 cents we went from 350 yeah mm -hmm. to 252 go yeah we go from right. 350 to 252 Okay, so that's a downward move in the put, but that downward move in the put is more than compensated by the upward move in the stock. Another way of looking at it is, Mike, this uh, brown part is the intrinsic value, mm -hmm. and the only way we lose intrinsic value means that the stock goes up. So as the intrinsic value trickles away, that means that my stock, which I also own, is going up the exact same amount, mm -hmm. right? So there's no loss. I have no loss, even though it looks like, oh, you're losing on the put. Well, not so much, really, because I'm losing the intrinsic value, which my stock is also gaining. But let's look at just the time value portion. Just the time value portion. Um, whoops, I've got a wrong slide here. Okay, just the time value portion is this. Look, it swelled up, even though time went by. You know, this was That's like right. a, uh, seven weeks into the position or something. Or No, no, three, four weeks into the position. That's what it was. This is four weeks into the position. My put has gained in value. Not really the put, but the time value of the put. Why? Because I purchased it in the money, and now it's at, at the, the money. Right. Yeah. Okay. Remember, at the money is the sell zone. And so I sold that put, and uh, not just sold the put, I also picked up a different put, okay? Here's what happened. Sold the March $29 put option at 252 and simultaneously bought the November, not November further out, but November closer in, mm -hmm. $30 put option for 162 So is this a credit or a debit? Well, this results in a credit. You take in 252 against your cost basis for the position that you're in, and you pay out $1.62, so you keep $0.90. Cents. Right. Okay. And another thing to mention is that I've raised the payout by a dollar. See, now my insurance policy is $30 instead of a $29 insurance policy. Mm -hmm. Kind of cool. Okay. So uh, after income method number three, here's the situation. Okay. The married put had cost me $38.85 a share. I took a credit from income method three. Now my new cost basis is $29.95. The new protective put strike is 30 so I'm guaranteed to make a nickel. Now, Mike, I mentioned that uh, I was actually going to make 75 cents instead of a nickel, and that's because I concurrently closed an income method number five play, which we don't have the time and we're not going to show today. Mm -hmm. But I did an income method number five play that captured 70 cents, and uh, it's interesting because it captured 20 cents on the front end, and when I closed it, captured, uh, I'm sorry, 25 cents, and when I closed it, it captured another 45 cents. Okay. Isn't that weird? I opened it for a credit, and I closed it for a bigger credit. <laughs> kind of cool, right? That's income method number five, which we call the money net. <clears throat> but today, uh, the star of the show is income method number three, which we call the bulletproof best. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So when you have a uh, guaranteed payout, that means that you're bulletproof. And uh, uh, so that's that's kind of exciting, Mike. Uh, taking a credit to not have to worry about where your stock is going, and 
uh, to still have unlimited upside potential in case she goes up. The end of the story uh, was that I uh, I actually had a bulletproof stock. You know, it this looks like a merry put, but there's something missing, right? Yeah, you have no break even, and you have no red on the position. You have no potential loss on the position. Exactly. Okay. All right. Now. Uh, Oh gosh, uh, we we do have some other riskless spread trades, but uh, I don't want to take up the time doing that. We promised uh, something else. We promised that uh, Mike, that you would show your uh, recent income method three play. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so let me go ahead and launch a poll. You take the screen from me. What do you guys think of spread trades that take income, risk nothing if they go against, and leave the upside open? And by the way, there's there's a lot of these. You know, it's not just this uh, income method three that I showed you. Mm -hmm. We've we've got uh, gosh, there's a way to do a bear call spread that can't go against you. There's a way to do a ratio call spread, which normally has unlimited upside risk, but you can do a ratio call spread if you set it up in the right context. That's right. You can make yeah, you can make it so that it cannot hurt you. So what do you think of that? Beats the shiitake mushrooms out of cover calls. Says about seven out of ten of you. Can I do that in my IRA? Says about three out of ten of you. Yes, you can. Whoa, didn't know you could do that. Got any more? Says about three out of ten. Uh, yeah, we got piles of them. Piles of them. I, I never share more than about uh, three or four of these, uh, but there's ten in the book. Um, so uh, I'm sh I'm sharing the um, sharing the results there, Mike. Seventy one percent would leave the cover call strategy to do to do just what I showed. Twenty six percent are concerned about IRA. Yeah, you can do that within an IRA. There's no penalties, no problems, and it's it's safer than cover calls, guys. They'll let you do cover calls in your IRA, but this is safe. Would you go along with that, Mike? Is uh, with ten years of background as the options education specialist over there at Power Options, would you go along with the statement I just made that that what I just showed is safer than covered calls? Oh, absolutely. How can it not be? There's no risk. I mean, once <laughs> if you do a bulletproofing move and the stock gaps down thirty percent, you didn't lose anything on a covered call. You're still going to lose twenty-seven percent or so. You keep your little three yeah. percent premium, but you're still down on the position. Think about it this way: if you're making or averaging 3% per month, you have a gap down of 30%, which means you have an unrealized loss of 27%. A lot of people say, oh, well, you can just keep writing calls and generate 3% per month. If everything stays stagnant and the stock stays at the same price and volatility remains the same after that decline, well, that would take you nine months just to get back to where you were. Oof. Um, now, I'll just say from the, from the get-go, you know, even before an opportunity to do income method number three manifests, Mm -hmm. Would it be safer? Absolutely. Well, of course. Yeah. That too. We saw that in the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. And the two comparisons yeah. side by side, it forces us in that position to cut the losers short and allow the winners to run. Yeah. Yeah, so your broker will allow you to do this. That, that That's the big concern a lot of folks have is, is will my broker allow me to do this? Oops. Sorry, folks. Okie dokie. Here's, here's your DHI setup. Yes. Let's hear about it, Mike. All right. So on... June 20th, what we do was doing, during, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, was during a Power Options webinar, and we used the Power Options tool uh, to run the married put search to identify potentially new positions just to show the functionality. Well, on that day, we came across this trade where we had a five-line setup for DHIs, DR Horton Incorporated, and we could purchase shares of stock at 1665 and at the same time, by a January 19 put for 370. Now, Kurt, Kurt knows this, and uh, some of you others who have been joining us know this. This is almost very similar to the risk-reward with the silver wheat and trade, but a little bit different. But the prices are close to the same. These are usually the stocks between, let's say, the $12 to $25 range that I trade. But in any case... We'll, we'll come back. Mike, I do want to come back to your silver wheat and trade a little bit later on. But, okay. but go ahead and... Go ahead and continue with the DHI. All right. So as the five line setup we saw before, we could open the position with these values. Now our total invested, our total out of pocket is twenty thirty five, twenty dollars and thirty five cents on a stock trading at sixteen sixty five. Now that might look expensive, but remember we're guaranteed to get nineteen back. So we're only risking a dollar thirty five 
on the position or 6.6% of our invested capital. Now, if I'm trading in a $10,000 account, as Kurt mentioned earlier, I might decide to only do 100 shares and one put. So this 1.35 would only represent 1.3, 1.4% of my total portfolio value. As it turned out, I entered this, I did enter this position the next day around the same prices with 300 shares and three puts so that that matched 1% or so of my invested capital. I'm only risking 6.6%, I'm sorry, of the invested capital in the position, but that was only 1% of my portfolio. Now, got it. when we take a look at the trade, as Kurt mentioned, that blue line is our profit and loss at expiration. If I held the position all the way to January expiration, made no adjustments, I would need the stock to be trading at 2035 in order to realize, or in order to break even or realize any profit, wouldn't I, Kurt? Right, because uh, that's how much you ended up spending for mm -hmm. the protection. You know, you, you spent 2035 for the whole position, so the stock needs to be at 2035 at expiration if you hold it till expiration, which you may or may not have the intention to do. Right, and assuming I make no adjustments between now and expiration. But what we were looking at earlier, though, is you see this curved red line here. This is sort of showing us the profit and loss at the halfway point in this case, or close to the halfway point. So we can see if the stock was trading around 1890, just what Kurt showed previously with the ALTR position, we don't need the stock to be trading at 2035 at any time. If the stock moves up in price, we could realize a break-even or realize a profit well before the stock got to that break-even price in the shorter term. Okay? Right. All right. right, you're not bound, you don't have to hold it all the way. Uh -huh. That's exactly right. And I'm going to consider making adjustments. Now, mm -hmm. Tuesday morning, here is what we presented. Uh, sorry for the spacing, folks. Sometimes when it converts over from an uh, uh, open office to a PowerPoint, it gets an extra tab in there. So I apologize, but we can still see it here. 11 a.m. Eastern Time on July 17th, before we ran our Tuesday webinar, the shares of DHI were up 1870s. So this was a gain of around 12.4, uh, 12.5 percent. The January 19 put was down to 250. All right, so we lost a dollar 20 on the put, and we gained over two dollars on the stock, just as we saw before with the LTR position. We did give some back, but uh, the gain in the stock more in that way. That so our liquidation value right now would be about twenty one dollars and twenty cents. So we could have liquidated for four point one percent of profit. Is the stock uh, now the stock is above twenty thirty five of course, but <laughs> we do see we have a gain in the short term here. Now liquidation could have been an option, but let's talk about what we did want to do, what we wanted to do. Now we use the power options tools. We found the position using the power options search. And we're going to use the Power Options portfolio tools now. And the other thing this is going to illustrate, Kurt, is that we actually made the adjustment, or I'm sorry, I made the adjustment on Monday before Tuesday's webinar right. to bulletproof the position. But the same values are there today. The stock's moved up and down over the past couple of days, but the opportunities are still there. All right? So this just kind of reinforces, Kurt, that uh, radioactive trading is sort of the opposite of day trading. When I see an income method available, I don't have to worry about jumping on it right then. I mean, I can. But I don't have to. If I'm going to wait to see if there's a little bit more, I can still probably get into a similar position in a normal market cycle. Now, what do I mean by that? Yeah. Let's take a look. So we're going to go into the My Portfolio tool, and we're going to go into the Profit and Loss Portfolios where we track our position. And again, we see here today, this is without the adjustment being made, Kurt. This is our original RPM for DR Horton. Uh, the paper trade 100 shares at 16.65, and purchasing the January 19 put for 3.70. The stock's right around 1849 now, so it's moved up about 11 percent, and uh, we do have a small mm -hmm. loss. We have a loss on the put of about a dollar or so, dollar thirty, dollar forty. So we're down to two dollars and thirty-two cents. What we want to use the power options tools to do in this case is we want to evaluate what adjustments might might we make. So I'm going to go to the position actions menu, and we're going to click on position analysis. The analysis tool, the position analysis tool is going to give us a breakdown of our current position. So, if you're looking at DH Horton today, we see the familiar profit and loss chart. We know our total risk right now, because we haven't made an adjustment, is that $1.35, Kurt, or roughly 6.6% of our invested capital. As we scroll down below, we see some information. We could liquidate the position for a 2.3% gain. It's a little bit less than we saw on the slides from Monday. But we could have a 2.3% gain after 29 days, 
And if we hold it to expiration, the stock's still trading in 1849, which is not our plan, uh, well, of course, we'll still have that maximum loss of 6.6%. Now, many of the people online, many of our attendees, I should say, online, have already downloaded the sketch or uh, they've seen some of your other free webinars where we talked about income method number one, for example. Well, the portfolio mm -hmm. tools calculate for me potential adjustments that we could do on this position to either generate income and lower the risk. So we could choose to maybe do income method number one, sell a call to create a collar. Our uh, August 19 call right now is selling for 58 cents. Let's look what this would do. This would result in maybe a potential maximum return of 6% to August expiration 30 days from now, and we'd cut our risk down to 3.9%. Not quite half, but we would reduce our risk within the first 30 days or so. Now, it's great to see things numerically, but as in comparing potential adjustments, I want to say to myself, well, what does this look like graphically? So we're going to open the Simulate Trade tool, and this gives us a side-by-side -side comparison of our position. We know right now, Kurt, that we have that uh, unrealized 2.3% gain on our married put position over here in red, our original position. We have a max risk of 6.6%. But on the blue side here, it shows us what would happen if we did sell this August 19 call. Well, numerically, we take our risk down to 3.9% on the downside, and we have a max return of 6%. What That's does a nice it? skew. <laughs> oh, if yeah. You were to, I, yeah, if we were to go on the um, trade simulator tool uh, that's available for free at, at radioactivetrading.com, mm -hmm. if we were to go on the trade simulator tool and uh, set up as your maximum risk 3.9% and your uh, and your maximum return as 6%, and then uh, with a 50-50 chance of it going either way, gosh. Uh, after 100 trials, you'd, you'd be uh, doing very well. You could be wrong because, more often than right and still make it a reasonable yeah. profit. Yeah, you could be wrong more often than right because because when you are right, you're making more than you possibly are losing when you're wrong. Mm -hmm. So pretty cool. Okay, so that's that's an option right. to make a pie. And the decision-making <laughs> yeah, decision process here is this chart. Okay, here's the married put. If we leave it alone and do nothing, what it would look like at expiration. And then we have the right. curved black line, which shows what the married put would look like theoretically. It's using some Black-Scholes pricing models there. But what it would look like theoretically at August expiration if the stock, if we didn't make the adjustments, stock was trading at 20, 22, 23. Now, the blue line shows us what the profit and loss chart would look if we applied income method number one. We do still cap the gain here, and that's still good. I mean, you've got a good reasonable range of return here. The two break evens between 16.30 and 22.76. We've lowered our risk on the downside a little bit. That 6% profit occurs right at that peak, doesn't it, Chris? So that's where the 6% yeah. would be realized. But there's something to note about this, and we talked about this on Tuesday. This might be a good way to reduce risk and still, as Kurt said, have maybe a 6% return. But the flaw is that it does cap the upside, simple income method number one. And when we look at an opportunity here for what Kurt just showed us, we have an income method number three where the number's uh, highlighted in red, where we could sell to close our 19 put for 232 and buy to open an August 20 put. So we're increasing the strike and shortening the time. We're only paying $1.84. So we're getting 62 cents of credit into our position. We're lowering our cost basis by that 62 cents. So we're down to a cost basis of 1987. But if we just purchased a 20 put, that means we're guaranteed a profit of 13% or 0.7% at August expiration in the worst case scenario. Now, why would one consider doing this? You could liquidate right now for a 2.3% gain. You could lower your risk a little bit and potentially make 6% in the best case scenario. And if I do this, I'm kind of not locking in, I'm locking in a profit of 0.7%. I'm not taking advantage of the 2.3% of realized gain I have, and I'm not generating, I'm generating a premium just as I did with income method number one. But now we have no risk on the position, Kurt. There's no break even. We still have the infinite upside. So the deciding factor, why I used income method number three is, as you mentioned, the earnings for DHI come up on 727. July 27th, yeah, so about two weeks a week from, from, oh, a week from now. Good grief. <laughs> yeah, it's a week from tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, and, a week from tomorrow. And, and you'll still have uh, another 
three weeks till expiration, right? Right. So uh, even if the stock yeah. does gap up, if the earnings are good and the stock jumps up to twenty dollars, or uh, let's say it goes up to twenty dollars or twenty-one dollars per share, I could still have enough premium to sell in August at the money call and guarantee further profits on the position. And even if it drops, well, there's some adjustments I might be able to use on that as well to generate more income onto this position, depending on my further expectation and my personal goals. Do you think, Mike, that you might use uh, income method number four to lock in a, an even higher return? Um, the reason I ask that is... I'll is, have uh, to look at the numbers. <laughs> yeah. I'll Mike, look at the numbers. Uh, Mike's... Uh, uh, what should I call it? Your flagship trade or your your uh, your big winner? Flagship's uh, <laughs> good, big winner. Yeah, yeah, the 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 trade that I'm known for for radioactive trading was a trade. Was it two yeah. two years ago? Two and a, yeah, two years ago roughly. Um, I believe it was. It was 2010. It was open in May of 2010, and that was on Silver Wheaton when the stock was about 1720, and we purchased a 20 strike put. So we had about the same. I believe it was about a six percent risk on the position. I want to say, and. Uh, you know, we had a cost basis of about twenty dollars, twenty dollars and fifty cents on the position. And you were bulletproof a month later. Using income yeah. method number one, which doesn't usually happen to me very often, but you're absolutely right, Kurt. In the first yeah. uh, thirty-four, thirty-five days, I was able to sell a call that essentially we had a dollar fifty at risk. We were able to sell the at the money call for a dollar forty-eight. We had a limit order to get in at a dollar fifty. It didn't get filled, so we got it at a dollar forty-eight at that time. Right. So what what happened? <clears throat> I'll just fill everybody in that in case you haven't been on the presentation where we showcase that. What happened is Mike bulletproofed his stock, and then with some management, he was able to hold on to the stock for another, uh, I think, four or five months, during which his married put position gained six uh, fifty nine point. 8%. It was liquid, liquidated so, in December for a 59.8% gain on the position. That's right. And at that time... Not shabby. <laughs> yeah. At the time we liquidated it, we had, we had made an adjustment. So, um, But at the time we did liquidate the position because it exceeded our expectations. Um, the worst case scenario is that we were going to make 22.8%. Yeah. The worst case scenario is you locked in 22.8%. And the best case was, well, you got out. With, with an almost 60% gain. See, the, th the thing that's impressive about that, it's not that impressive that you bought a stock and got a 60% gain. It's impressive that you couldn't possibly have lost more than single-digit percents to begin with. Mm -hmm. A month later, you couldn't lose anything. You went through two earnings announcements with no fear at all, and uh, then ended up closing for 60%, for 598 mm -hmm. So that that's what's impressive. <laughs> that's exciting to me. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Mike, uh, we're doing pretty good. It's it's uh, eleven oh six where I am, or one oh six. Should should uh, d did you want to uh, continue here, or do you want to wind something up? Or? Well, essentially, this yeah. is okay. where I'm at on the position. You know, this is what's possible right now. It's four days after I made this adjustment, still before earnings. But these are essentially the numbers got that I'm in at. I have a guaranteed profit of 0.7% and still the infinite upside, and I'm just waiting on the earnings. And someone, might, someone asked me the other day, uh, a customer who attended the Tuesday webinar called me up Tuesday night. Said, well, if you're in that position, you said you're bulletproof, why don't you just sell a call right now? I've got earnings coming up in seven days. I don't want to count do you that have game. To? Yeah, I don't have to do anything. I want to see if it moves up. If it moves down... Great. Now, sure, if I sold a call now, applied income method number one to this, yeah, my maximum risk would be negative maybe 1.8 or uh, probably higher than that, probably in the negative 2% range, but then my gains would be capped. I'm expecting this to, to move up, and then as Kurt mentioned, then I'll decide after it moves up, since I've already bulletproof, do I want to use income method number four? Um, do I want to use uh, a different one of the nested spread trades after that point for August expiration? Or even as Kurt mentioned, hey, I might even want to decide to do an income method number six now so that upside isn't capped, but I could still generate more premium against it. Happy day. Mm -hmm. well, I'm really excited for you, Mike. This is, this is something else. Um, we'll see how it cool. goes, but I'm very happy with this. And <laughs> that's the other thing. What you mentioned, Kurt, some of the most important things is that uh, I have some adjustments myself to make on some of my standard collars and uh, one of my other income methods I have open uh, by Friday. I have some adjustments to make. But with this one, I don't have to do anything. I'm just going to sit and leave this open now till the 27th and see what happens.
How about that? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Why do you have to do anything? That's right. <laughs> Well, folks, I, I think uh, we're, we're going to go ahead and wind her up. I wanted to ask uh, everybody in attendance, uh, you know, not, not just if this was helpful, but what was helpful. What do you think is the most valuable part of today's lesson? And you can only pick one, so I want you to think it through, okay? Was it the idea of limiting risk down to single digits with something way better than a stop order? Was it seeing how the put could be moved to guarantee a payout? Like Mike has done recently, and mm -hmm. like uh, like like Mike has done in the past, and I've done in the past, uh, and and thousands of our um, subscribers have done. Is it seeing how a spread could take income, but still leave the top off? Um, is it the fact that the structure of a trade is more important than the trade itself? You know, it's it's not important to pick stocks and to time trades. It's important to pick stops <laughs> and trade time. And, and that's really uh, what uh, reductive trading is about. Is is bulletproofing your big aha moment from today? And if so, uh, would you like to be bulletproof in your stocks? Would you like to make trades that make you bulletproof? So let me go ahead and uh, <clears throat> close that up because <clears throat> we've had a number of folks already. Sir, I want to thank everybody for coming. We started with about fifty. Um, in attendance, and we ended up with over a hundred. Mm -hmm. Whoops! What? Did oh, I blow something? No, I did. I did. Oh! <laughs> Didn't realize <laughs> okay. I still had the screen, and I still had the pen tool available. So I, I sorry, Kurt. Didn't mean to throw you gotcha. off. Gotcha. Apologize. Not at all. Uh, so bulletproofing was our our uh, winner today, but the second place was the fact that uh, the structure of a trade is more important than the trade itself. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Structuring it so that you can't lose and yet you can win, you know, uh, truly cutting your loser short and allowing your winners to run. That is the most uh, important part of trading. It's, it's knowing how to structure a trade uh, rather than what you pick and, or why you get in or when you get in and when you get out. It's about structure. Mm -hmm. Cool. And bulletproofing was uh, impressive to a lot of folks. Uh, third place. They like the idea of using a spread trade to take income but still leave the top off, and uh, that is interesting. A lot of folks don't realize that you can do that. So uh, everybody in the line does, so good for you. Okay, uh, Mike, I'm going to go ahead and uh, close it up. You know, uh, let, me, let me maybe grab the screen there. Oh, okay. I was just showing, uh, I was over on RadioactiveTrading.com oh. here, and I was in the free webinars and podcast app. We had a couple of questions. Some gentlemen came in oh. late, some had to leave early, and they wanted to know if this presentation was going to be archived and where can they access the archives. And if you just go to RadioactiveTrading.com, just click on the free webinars and podcast tab, and then you have a selection of some of our archived presentations there as well. Oh, super. Okay, I'm glad that you made that available. Okay, well then this is as good a place as any to, to uh, finish. So uh, folks, uh, everybody, thank you so much for coming out and spending your, your day with uh, Mike and me. And uh, Mike, thank you for your help and also for sh uh, you know, sharing uh, mm -hmm. your trade. I know, I know that you're you know, kind of a personal, kind of a private person, but, but uh, we, we really do appreciate you showing uh, what you're doing in your account. Hey, no problem, and we'll have some fun with it. We've got some... Uh... We've got some fodder for the next week and two weeks, and I'm saying that we don't have enough. I mean, you're going to be able to talk about your management <laughs> techniques that you're going to do on Friday, and then uh, right. you know, after Friday, two weeks from now, we'll be able to show what happens with this uh, DHI position from there after the earnings come out. That's right. So, yeah, uh, let me invite everybody to stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> same bat time, same bat channel. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. good. All righty. Thank you, Mike, and thanks, everybody. We'll see you out there. Happy yeah. trading. Have a great expiration, everyone.